Hello, my name is Beth Mahaffey with Highway to Holiness. Today we're going to talk about the Hillel II Metonic Cycle. This is part five of the New Moon series. The New Moon series contains eight parts. The first presentation was on day, also known as Yom. Two was the significance of the New Moon. Three was the historical practice and debate of the New Moon. Four was basic astronomy. Five is Hillel II's metonic cycle. Six is the actual astronomical lunisolar cycle. Seven is evaluating Hebraic calendars. And eight is a calendar for Yehovah's people. The goals of this series are to explain why days are reckoned from evening to evening or sunset to sunset to teach the significance of the new moon and its impact on reckoning the first day of the month, to fully educate Yehovah's people who desire to walk in obedience to his commandments regarding the new moon's role in observing the feasts of Yehovah, to introduce and address the debate over conjunction versus new crescent moon, to equip Yehovah's people with the astronomical knowledge necessary to evaluate subject matter regarding the new moon and the various proposed Hebraic calendars currently being used by his people, to propose a Hebraic calendar that Yehovah's people worldwide can follow without reliance on other assemblies, and to encourage unity and observance of holy convocations around the world. This presentation on Hillel II's Metonic Cycle and Calendar is strictly for education purposes. I do not advocate following this calendar. I just want you to have a firm background before I present what is happening with the actual lunisolar cycle and before I make recommendations on how to walk out Yehovah's calendar. The Hillel II calendar is a lunisolar calendar based on the Metonic Cycle that many Jews follow today. In addition, many non-Jewish Torah-observant believers follow it as well. However, there are many who began their walk with it, but they have abandoned it. They rightly take issue with certain aspects of the calendar. Before we get ahead of ourselves, let's learn more about the calendar itself. The Hillel II calendar is a calendar in which Rosh Chodesh, the first day of a calendar month, is instituted on the day of a calculated mean conjunction the time between two successive new moons, instead of citing the new waxing crescent as it was done in Yeshua's day. With no Sanhedrin in the land of Israel, the monthly calendar is established according to a fixed calendar based on the Metonic cycle. Even though Hillel II is considered the creator of the Hebrew calendar, it was based on the 19-year Metonic cycle, which is named after a Greek astronomer named Meton of Athens. This cycle is believed to have been devised around 433 before Common Era, but it was already known by Babylonian astronomers at that time. By the 12th century Common Era, these calculations were codified by Maimonides, or Rambam, in the Mishnah Torah, Kedush HaChodesh in Sefer Zemanim. According to the Hillel II calendar, the new moon's calculated mean conjunction value is based on 235 lunar cycles over a 19-year period. This mean value is based on the mean of an epicycle, a circle traveling along a deferent, which was the kind of planetary motion believed to be accurate at the time the calendar was created. Kepler's laws of planetary motion, one law of which is an elliptical orbit, replaced this Ptolemaic model in 1609 Common Era. The lunar month takes about 29.5 days, therefore months can be either 29 or 30 days. Specifically, the time of the mean movement of the moon between conjunctions for the Hillel II calendar is 29 days, 12 hours, and 793 units. An hour is divided into 1,080 units, this number was chosen because it can be divided into fourths, eighths, thirds, sixths, ninths, and tenths. An ordinary lunar year of 12 months is 354 days, 8 hours, and 876 units. 
a leap year of 13 months is 383 days, 12 hours, and 589 units. A solar year is 365 days and 6 hours. This exceeds a lunar year by 10 days, 21 hours, and 204 units. A 13th month, a second Adar, is often required in the middle of the year to even out the differences between the solar and lunar years. The Hillel II calendar begins its year on Rosh Hashanah, Tishrei 1. However, Exodus 12.1 says, Yehovah said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month, when they left Egypt, Aviv or Nisan, shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. The day of Tishrei 1 is not only determined by the mean conjunction value, but also by four rules of postponement that are not found in Scripture. This can cause Tishrei 1 to be postponed a few days. The determination of the day of the week for Tishrei 1 and the number of days for the year established the Hillel 2 calendar for the year. This calendar was created in order to observe the feast at the appropriate time. Therefore, the idea of there being separate sacred and civil calendars is a moot point. Kedush HaChodesh chapter 7 says the day of the conjunction will be the day of Rosh Chodesh except in the following instances. The conjunction takes place on Sunday, Wednesday, or Friday. The conjunction takes place at noon or afternoon. In an ordinary year, the conjunction takes place on the night of the third day after 204 units of the tenth hour have passed or later that day. In an ordinary year that follows a leap year, the conjunction takes place on Monday past 589 units of the fourth hour after daybreak has passed or later that day. If the conjunction occurs in one of these four instances, Rosh Chodesh is not established on the day of the conjunction, but rather on the day that follows or on the day following that. These non-scriptural rules are not observed by Karaites who observe the maturation of the barley for the beginning of the year and should not be used by us either. The days of each month of the calendar are set and they do not necessarily reflect what is happening astronomically. The Hillel II calendar begins in the month of Tishrei, which is in autumn. The Gregorian month would be September or October, and the number of days would be 30. Cheshvan would be in October or November, and it would have either 29 or 30 days. Kislev would begin in either November or December, and it would have either 29 or 30 days. In the season of winter, the month of Tevet would be in December or January, and it would have 29 days. Shavat would be in January or February, and it would have 30 days. Adar would occur in February and March. If it's a regular month, it would have 29 days. If it's a leap month, it would have 30 days. In spring, Nisan would occur in March or April and have 30 days. Iyar would occur in April or May and have 29 days. Sivan would occur in May or June and have 30 days. For summer, Tammuz would occur in June or July and have 29 days. Av would occur in July or August and have 30 days. And Elul would take place in August or September and have 29 days. Due to the variation in the number of days in certain months and the addition of a month in a leap year, the number of days in a Hillel II calendar year can be significantly different. Standard and leap years can be classified as deficient, regular, or complete. This chart shows the types of years in the Hillel II calendar. The type of year is dependent on the number of days for Cheshvan and Kislev. In a deficient year, both of these months have 29 days. In that case, a standard year would have 353 days and a leap year would have 383 days. In a regular year, Cheshvan has 29 days and Kislev has 30 days. That would cause a standard year to be 354 days and a leap year to be 384 days. In a complete year, 
Heshvan and Kislev both have 30 days. In a standard year, this would be 355 days, and in a leap year, it would be 385 days. These additional days for Heshvan and Kislev come from the postponements that are built into the calendar for Tishrei 1. The Hillel 2 calendar has seven leap years that occur in the 3rd, 6th, 8th, 11th, 14th, 17th, and 19th year of the Metonic cycle to make up for the difference between a solar year, which has 365.24 days, and a lunar year, which has 354 days. These leap years are fixed and occur in a span sequence pattern of 332-3332. According to Kedush HaChodesh, Chapter 1, the years we follow are solar years, as implied by Deuteronomy 16.1, keep the month of spring. Sanhedrin 13b, cited by the Rambam, Chapter 4, Halakha 1, explains, this verse is a charge to arrange the calendar so that the vernal spring or March equinox always falls in the month of Nisan. Despite this footnote for the March equinox to always fall in the month of Nisan, the Hillel 2 calendar often has the March equinox preceding the month of Nisan. Rashi commentary for the stone edition of the Humash for Deuteronomy 16.1 explains that Pesach, which is Passover, is to be in the month of springtime. It's a primary rule for the calendar. When necessary, the Sanhedrin was to add a month to the calendar to prevent Nisan from occurring in winter, as defined by the Hebrew calendar. An additional month of Adar, consisting of 30 days, is added in the leap years to make up for the approximate 11-day difference between the lunar and solar years. The addition of an extra Adar is to ensure that Pesach falls in the month of spring, or Aviv. When people who follow this calendar want to know whether or not a particular year of the Hillel 2 calendar is a leap year or not, they can do a calculation. The Hebrew year, 5776, which is the Gregorian fall of 2015 to the fall of 2016, was the 19th year of the 19-year cycle because 5776 is divisible by 19 with no remainder. The same is true of 5795 and 5814. The Hillel 2 calendar leap year can be determined by taking the number of the Hebrew year multiplying by 7, adding 1, dividing by 19, and finding the remainder. If you're using a calculator to do this, you would need to multiply the decimal remainder by 19 to find the remainder. If the remainder is less than 7, it's a leap year. If it's 7 or greater, it's a regular year. Here's an example. The year 5778 is multiplied by 7, Plus 1 divided by 19 is 2,128 with a remainder of 15. Therefore, it's not a leap year. 57, 79 times 7 plus 1 divided by 19 is 2,129 with a remainder of 3. Therefore, it is a Hillel 2 calendar leap year. In the following charts, I'm going to show you two metonic cycles. This will contain the year number that's in the cycle, the Hebrew year, the multiplication and division with the remainders, as well as whether or not it's a leap year or not. But most importantly, I want to explain and show you what the span is when they're talking about the threes and the twos. What we want to do is begin counting the years in the cycle. And when we get to a leap year, that number will be either a 3 or a 2 in the span. For example, we begin counting in year 1, 1, 2, 3, and 3 is when that leap year is, and then we start counting again, 1, 2, 3, and that year is a leap year. Then when we count 1 and 2, we're at a leap year again, so that is referred to as 3, 3, 2. And then we repeat something similar as we move forward just recounting 1 through 3 or 1 through 2 to get to the next leap year. And so when we're looking at this, you can see that the span is 332, 3332. Then it repeats again, 332, 
3332. According to a Jewish source, the Jews are aware that the Hillel II calendar is drifting off track. Time will tell what they intend to do about it. This is just another reason to avoid this calendar and go with something closer to what Yehovah set forth in Scripture. It's very interesting to see the differences between the Hillel II calendar and what really happens astronomically with the sun in the astronomical lunisolar cycle. I invite you to see the details of this 19-year cycle in the next presentation called The Actual Astronomical Lunisolar Cycle. Once you've seen this, you will finally be ready to see evaluating calendars and a calendar for Yehovah's people. Again, my name is Beth Mahaffey with Highway to Holiness. Thank you for joining me today for the Hillel II Mentonic Cycle. Until next time, Shalom.